Okay, give me Psalms 23rd chapter. I'm going to start with this famous psalm. Some of you know it, some of you don't know it. Some of you know it, some of you don't know it. This is a psalm of King David. Now, on a, now, this is a famous psalm because everybody in the Christian church will recite it. Some of them know it by heart. But nobody knows what it means. So, let us begin. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The word want translates to lack. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let's deal with this shepherd first. Give me John chapter 10. Y'all write these precepts down. John chapter 10, verse 11. For who is the shepherd? And we ain't going to do no guesswork. The book of John chapter 10, verse 11. Mm -hmm. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Proving that Christ is the shepherd the Bible's making reference to. Jump down to verse 14, please. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Jump down to verse 16, please. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them, I, them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold. And one shepherd. So now I want to show you something. Give me Ezekiel 37. Now we just read that Christ is the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. There shall be one fold and one shepherd. Uh, Ezekiel 37. Let me show you, show you something. Because some Israelites fall off the horse with this. Ezekiel 22. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 22. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols. Nor with their detestable things. Nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned. And will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And, and David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. So the king and the shepherd is talking about the same thing, but here, for some reason, it says, David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. Go ahead. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Read. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. So here again. So you have some schools of thought that say, yeah, it's going to it's the, the real king over Israel is David. The real shepherd over Israel is David. We just read John the 10th chapter where Christ said, I am the good shepherd. Give me Luke 1, 32, I think it is. If that ain't it, find this verse. You know what I want, Liam, right? Luke 1, verse 31. In verse 32. 32. That's what I called. Yes, sir. Oh, he, shall, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Start at verse 31 like you wanted to. Start. Verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Read. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. That's what we just read in Ezekiel 37. Go ahead. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. So when Ezekiel 37 makes reference to David, it's really talking about Christ. That's what it's talking about. So let's go back now. Give me Hebrews 13, 20. Hebrews 13, 20. I'm still dealing with that shepherd. Although, it, although you have the point, I, I, I got to beat it over the head. Hebrews 13 and 20. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, 
through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Give me 1 Peter 5 and 4. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So Christ is the chief shepherd. Christ is the good shepherd. Christ is the shepherd. Psalms, the 23rd chapter, makes reference to. Let's go back to Psalms 23. And verse 1 again. Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So when it says lack, want, it means lack. I shall not lack. That's what it's talking about. Read. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. So let's examine it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Give me Ezekiel 20, verse 6. Ezekiel chapter 20. Verse 6, in the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. So when the Bible talks about a land flowing with milk and honey, it's talking about a land with a lot of grass and cattle. That's what it's talking about. That's the green pastures it's talking about. Because literal milk and honey acts as nothing but a laxative. So you know it ain't talking about that. Okay, he's talking about green pasture. In order to have flowers and things like that, you need bees. You need honey. That brings the honey. Milk refers, makes reference to cows, goats, things of such nature. Everybody understand? From there, give me 2 Esdras 2.17. 2 Esdras 2.17. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He maketh me to lay, walk beside the still waters. Second Ezra 2.17. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 17. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee. The Se mother of the children here, write this down, is making reference to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Watch this. Go ahead. Saith the Lord, for thy help will I send my servants Essay and Jeremy. That's Isaiah and Jeremiah. After whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. You see that? Sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. That's really going into the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And as many fountains flowing with milk and honey. There's that green pasture again. That's what it's going into, that flourishing land. The Garden of Eden. Go ahead. And seven mighty mountains whereupon they there grow roses and lilies, whereby I will fill thy children with joy. See that? Whereby I will fill thy children with joy. So the land of Israel. Now go to Ezekiel. I believe it's chapter 36 where it talks about the land shall be changed. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 35. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. So if you ever wanted to know where the Garden of Eden was, <laughs> that's our homeland. That was and is the promised land. It's not talking about the entire continent of Africa. Okay, read that again. And they shall say this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. So the land now, when you look at it, and guess what, brothers? Guess what, sisters? The white man has done a trick bag on us. I got, I got to show you this. Pull up on the map. Give, pull up, I need to see the land of Israel. And I need to see uh, up towards Syria. I'm going to show you all your, your friendly neighborhood white man is a liar. Right there. Now, uh, Officer Leon. Yes, sir. Now, y'all see Israel. Y'all see it right there, that little spot right there, right? Get Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. Now, I need y'all over here to pay attention with the arrow. I need y'all to show the people. Go ahead. That your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, to give them. So now the Lord is telling us about the land he's given us. Israel. Go ahead. As the days of heaven upon the earth. So our kingdom is the days is like the days of heaven upon earth. Read. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments 
which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. Uh-huh. And you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. So we're going to be mighty. That's what he was telling us. Go ahead. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Now he's going to give us the map on what shall be ours, what the land of Israel consists of. Go ahead. From the wilderness and Lebanon. Stop right there. All right. When we left Egypt, we crossed the Red Sea. Now, you see where it says Cairo, right? You see the little uh, river, not the Nile. I'm not talking about the Nile. It says Gaza Strip, right to the side of Gaza, there's a blue line, wherein is the Red Sea, okay? Because that whole thing is the, uh, they call it something else, but the smaller part they call the Red Sea. We cross that, and you see where it says Gaza Strip, right? That's the wilderness. Do you see that, Abiel? Where it says Gaza Strip is the wilderness. You see that? You see that, Captain Shem? Officer Abiel, you see that? Officer Liam, read it again for me. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness and Lebanon. Okay, the wilderness is where it says Gaza Strip. Now, where it says Lebanon. Take, take them up there. You see where it says Lebanon, right above Israel, right? Keep going up. Northward, it says, right under Beirut, it says Lebanon. So our borders went from the wilderness even towards Lebanon. Read on. The, from the river. The river... Euphrates. Now y'all see the river Euphrates. See, it goes through Syria. Y'all see that? Every, sh- Captain Shem, do you see that? Officer Abiel, do you see that? So, notice what, notice what God is saying. From the wilderness, which is the Gaza Strip, even towards Lebanon, towards the Euphrates River. Do y'all see how l- the land was? According to the scriptures. Go ahead. Even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. The uttermost sea is the Mediterranean Sea that you see right there. So our land was larger, according to the scriptures, than what they show on the map. That's how the white man lies in everything. Okay? Y'all see that? So this is why we have to go by what the Bible says. Not by, well, the white man's commentary. What the hell with the white man's commentaries? They lie at all costs. That was it, Officer Abiel. Thank you. Captain Shem, thank you so much. So now, Officer Liam, let's go back to Psalms, the 23rd chapter, before I forget the thought. Psalms chapter 23, verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. So that's the promised land. That's the kingdom was really talking about. Go ahead. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Still waters references peace. Read. He restoreth my soul. Now, that's the part I wanted to get to right there. Right? Let me get it. Let me get it so I can read along with y'all. Psalms, the 23rd chapter and verse 3. One more time. He restoreth my soul. Go ahead. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He restoreth my soul. In order to restore something, it's implying what? Huh? He restoreth my soul. Not he restoreth my land. We already dealt with the land. Now he's talking about my soul. What is he talking about? He restoreth my... Give me a piece of paper. Nobody got a clue. I got one right here. Uh, Bear with me. I'm going to show you something. Here's your soul. Now restore it. Who can restore that? Only God can restore it. So what happened to us? What happened? Who can tell me what happened that our soul needs to be restored? One brother, only one brother got a clue. We forgot our heritage and our um, heritage and the commandments, and we fell into sin and forgot our heritage. Okay, you said we forgot our heritage twice, which is correct. That's good. I like that. We forgot our heritage. Anything else? When you say our heritage, give me some, break it down for me. The commandments. Okay, the commandments. Our God, we started serving other gods and, um, you know, keeping other nations' ways and things now, like that. Now, your answer is good, but it's like his. It's, it's still just scratching the surface. I need, I want, uh, let me hear over here. Joan, help us. 
He restoreth my soul. What happened to us? The kingdom was the kingdom was split, and uh, restoring he was. Our, what happened to us was the kingdom was split. Our Remember, he's talking about heritage. your soul. Yeah, yeah. So our soul is, you know, our heritage, our language, our dignity. You know, knowing who the Most High is, we we lost all of that. Okay, so your answer's pretty good too. I like all your answers are right. So, like Jonah said, in slavery, they beat our language from us, they beat our identity from us, they destroyed our families, they destroyed our nations, they separated us throughout the entire planet Earth. And you know, no church on Earth talks about the diaspora. And when I say diaspora, the Bible uses the word dispersed or scattered. Nobody talks about that. But God talk about that. So we're going to talk about that. So he restoreth my soul. Now give me John 14, 26. He restoreth my soul. Actually, give me, I'm sorry, give me Matthew 17, 11. I want to start there before I get that. Matthew chapter 17, verse 11. Ah. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. So what would Elijah do? Restore all things. Give me the, the precept for Malachi. What is one of the things Elijah would do to restore us? Malachi is at chapter 4, verse 4. Come on. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Start above it. Start above verse it. Verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, Remember my servant. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Go ahead. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb. Watch this. For all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Here it comes. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. What would Elijah do? Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Go ahead. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. The heart of our fathers is in this Bible. The mind of our fathers is in this Bible. So he would turn the mind of our fathers to the children. We are the children. So what is he doing? Restoring our identity. Beginning with the law of Moses that was commanded and given in the land of Horeb. Read. And the heart of the children. And the heart of the children, meaning our minds. Go ahead. To their fathers. To our fathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, so forth and so on. Was that it? Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Give me Acts 1, 20, 1 verse 6. So the law and our identity, the testimony and the law was given by Elijah. So this is us just being here, hearing this, listening to this, is proof that Elijah has come and gone already. Read. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Uh -huh. When they therefore will come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Well, thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel, to us. So it ain't ha that part ain't happened yet. Give me Jeremiah 30, 17. Jeremiah 30 and verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. I will restore health. I don't know about y'all. A lot of our people sick as hell. We got plagued with all kinds of diseases as a result of what, brothers? Sin. So when it says he restoreth my soul, the Lord said, okay, I'm going to restore your soul. Let me start with the law and your identity. Followed later on, and we're moving into that part. With our health, like you're reading here. Read that again. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Mm -hmm. From there. Yeah, hate, 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 hate. Give me Isaiah chapter 1, verse 26. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 26. I don't want y'all to forget the thought. Remember, David said prophetically, he restoreth my soul. Go ahead. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. So what I want you to see there, and I will restore thy judges as at the first. Many people foolishly th say, you don't suppose to have ranking order in the congregations. 
Uh, excuse me, excuse me. The Bible says, and I will restore thy judges as at the first. Give me Titus. Hold this. Give me Titus 1 and 5. Here's the precept, O learned one. Come as you are, do what you want. That's what the white man has taught us. But what does God say? Read. Titus chapter 1 verse 5. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city. So, ordain elders in every city. Elders translate to what word in Isaiah chapter 1? Go back to Isaiah chapter 1 verse 26 again. Isaiah 1 and 26. Let's 26. see if your mind can pick it up. Go and ahead. I will restore thy judges as at the first. So the word here for elders is judges. Saying the same thing. So what they were doing in the New Testament was nothing new. It was prophetic. What we're doing now is nothing new. It's prophetic. Read. And thy counselors as at the beginning. Watch this. Afterward. Now it says afterward. After you get yourselves in order with your judges and your counselors. Afterward what? Thou shalt be called the city of righteousness. The faithful city. Now we waiting to get to that point right there. We waiting for that point right there. That faithful city is like Christ said. You are a city set on a hill. Okay, like he says in Matthew 5. From there, from there, give me Acts 3.19. You need order and rank in the city, but Negroes don't know that. Negro think in the city, you do whatever, whatever the hell you want. Y'all crazy. Acts 3.19. Acts 3.19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Repent ye therefore and be converted. The word converted means changed. Go ahead. That your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be blotted out, wiped away, forgiven. When the times of refreshing. When the times of refreshing. Shall come from the presence of the Lord. Uh -huh. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Uh -huh. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of wait, all things. Wait, wait. It said, whom the heavens must receive, meaning Christ would stay in heaven until what? Until the times of restitution of all things. What does the word restitution break down to? Restore. Until the times of the restoration is fulfilled. Was that it, Officer Liam? No, sir. Go ahead. Which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets mm -hmm. since the world began. Y'all see that? So let's go back to Psalms 23 and 3. I just want verse 3 again. I'm just going back to the verse because I want to touch on the bottom part. Verse 3 of Psalms chapter 23. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Give me that Deuteronomy 6.25. Y'all know what righteousness is. It was already answered in Malachi uh, 4 verse, was it 4? Yeah, about the law of Moses. The law of Moses. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Uh -huh. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. So when it says he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness, talking about God's commandments. Give me Psalms 5, verse 8. Psalms chapter 5, verse 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness, because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Give me Proverbs 8, verse 20. Proverbs 8, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 20. I lead in the way of righteousness. In the midst of the paths of judgment. Y'all see that? In the paths of judgment. So when we go back to Psalms 23, one of the most famous psalms in the world that many people read but nobody comprehends. Verse 3, once again. He restoreth my soul. Why does our soul need to be restored? Because we went into slavery and lost everything. We were destroyed as a people. Now is the time of restoration. Now is the time of restitution. Read. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. What are the paths of righteousness? God's commandments, his laws, his statutes, his commandments. Read. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Oh, here we go. I heard this all my life growing up. 
I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. What the valley of the shadow of death? I can't pay my bills. My husband left me. I'm in the valley of the shadow. Sister, stop. Sister Betty, that's not the valley of the shadow of death. Give me that Psalms 107, verse 10 through 14. Psalms chapter 107, verse 10. Here's the proof. Because when they could pay their bills and their husband don't leave, that means they're in the kingdom? No. You're not in the kingdom. Well, my husband's still with me and I could pay all the bills. I'm rich. If, guess what? If you rich, you still in the valley of the shadow of death. Read what that says. Such as sit in darkness. Such as sit in darkness. The darkness means sin, confusion. Read. And in the shadow of death. And in the shadow of death. Being bound in affliction and be, iron. Being bound in affliction and iron. That means you're in someone else's country. You're in someone else's land as a what, brothers? Slave. So no matter how rich, you just are a rich slave. Everybody understand that? I don't care. Oprah, tell, here's a message to Oprah. You still are a rich slave. Who else? Give me somebody. Jay-Z, a rich slave. Tiger Woods, a rich slave. Michael Jordan, you, whoever you got out there, a rich slave. And we're telling them this because we love them. Go back to where you was at. Psalms 23. No, did you go down to verse 14? No, sir. Go down to verse 14. So, Psalms chapter 107, verse 11. Because they rebelled against the words of God. Because we as a people rebelled against the words of God. Go ahead. And contemned the counsel of the Most High. The word contemn means hate it. We hated the counsel of God, meaning we hate the Bible. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. So therefore, he brought down our minds with slavery. That's the labor it's talking about. Go ahead. They fell down, and there was none to help. Uh -huh. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. You know what it means? They fell down, and there was none to help. Who can explain there was none, none to help? Somebody, raise your hand. There was none to help. Yes, brother in the center. It's talking about there was none to save us. Same thing it says in Deuteronomy. Like? Like uh, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, you know, and so on. So none could actually redeem us out of these conditions. Very good. All praise. I'm glad you got that thought right. Read on, officer. And there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in so their trouble. So after you realize there's no Savior on the earth, it says, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. Go ahead. And he saved them out of their distresses. Go ahead. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. So the Lord did it for us in Egypt. He shall surely do it for us in these days and ages. Go back to Psalms 23rd chapter. Everybody understand that? All right. Let's go back to Psalms 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So notice it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Let's talk about the rod and the staff. Give me uh, Psalms, uh, Proverbs 22 and 15. For the rod, I want to break down the rod. A rod is like a stick. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So the rod of correction is something you would spank the child with. Now it's still, we still didn't get the understanding yet, but we're about to get it. Give me 29 and 15. Proverbs. 29.15. Proverbs 29.15. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me hear it. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. So what is the rod really talking about where it says um, in Psalms 23, when it says thy rod and thy staff. I just want the rod part. They comfort me. So here it's saying that this rod, a rod is used for what, brothers? Correction. Correction. 
So what is it really talking about? The Bible. That's what it's talking about, the word of God, his laws. So when it says, thy rod and thy staff, let's talk about the staff. Give me that in the Hebrews eleven twenty one. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was, a di when he was dying, a dying, Bless both the sons of Joseph and worship, leaning upon the top of his staff. So a staff is used to, as a support. Everybody understand that? A rod is used for correction, and a staff is used to support. So both of them is talking about the word of God. So when it says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, a quick precept would be Romans 15 verse 4. Give me that. Here's a quick on the street precept. They rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This is a quick on the street precept. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. So he's talking about the scriptures. Go ahead. Were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. Comfort of what? The scriptures uh -huh. might have hope. So when it says thy rod and thy, th thy staff, they comfort me, it's talking about the scriptures. Everybody understand that? Let's go back to Psalms 23, verse 5 now. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. So let's deal with that first part. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Give me Isaiah 30 and 8. What is the table? Some of you think it's talking about a kitchen table. It ain't talking about a kitchen table with chicken and turkey on it. It's not talking about that. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table. And noted in a book. So the table is talking about a book. What book? The Bible. The scriptures. Was that it? That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Give me Psalms 50 verse 21. So it said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Watch this. Psalm chapter 50 verse 21. Uh-huh. These things hast thou done. Talking about Esau. And I kept silence. Uh-huh. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such and one as thyself. Esau did so much evil to us, he thought that God was like him. Read. But I will reprove but thee. But God will correct the white man, rebuke the white man. Go ahead. And set them in order before thine eyes. You see that? And set the Israelites in order before their eyes. That's what they're seeing on YouTube. This is why all the nations are confused and confounded. What's happening with these blacks and Latinos getting organized like this in that Bible? Because that's the prophecy. Verse 5 again, Officer Leon, Psalms 23. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. So the white man got the Bible. The Bible's here. Everybody got it. But nobody's obeying it but the Israelites. Nobody can translate it or interpret the understanding but the Israelites. Go ahead. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Now let's talk about that oil. Give me that in Psalms 133. That oil. 133 and 1. I just want to talk about the oil. The oil, for quick reference, is making reference to blessings. So you can write that down. But I just want to give some scriptures to show you that. Read that. Psalms 133 verse 1. Uh -huh. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is. For brethren to dwell together in unity, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. So when Aaron was anointed with this ointment, it ran down from his head down his beard. And it's saying even Aaron's beard because his beard was known to be very long. Give me Exodus chapter 30, verse 25. Exodus 30, verse 25. Exodus chapter 30. Verse 25. Let's start up. Yeah, just get to the point. Yeah, y'all can read the whole or the entire chapter on your own. On your own. And thou shalt make it in holy of ho excuse me. And thou shalt make it in oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be in holy anointing oil. 
Now let's jump down to verse 30. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Read. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be in holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. So this oil was so special, it was only meant for Aaron and the priests. Go ahead. Upon man's flesh it shall not be poured. Neither shall ye make it. Neither shall ye make any other like it. You couldn't replicate it. It was a law not to try to duplicate this oil. Because you know how Negroes do. They say, well, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to get paid. Go ahead. After the composition of it, it is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Read. Whosoever compoundeth it any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off. From his people. That means put to death. That's what it. That's how serious this oil was that went upon Aaron and the, his the priests. So, get watch this. Give me Sirach forty five fifteen. Sirach forty five fifteen. So when we read, for example, in Psalm, because we always read Psalms one thirty three. Uh, how uh, how does it go? How mm, who? Somebody quoted for me Psalms one thirty three. I ain't looking at it. How precious and good for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment. Even the ointment that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard. So, God is comparing the unity of brethren like this special oil that you could not make on your own. You could not duplicate it. You got it, Officer Leon? No, sir. Sirach 35 in what verse? Sirach uh, 45 in verse 15. Sirach chapter 45 and verse 15. Uh -huh. Moses consecrated him and anointed him with holy oil. Talking about the oil that was given upon Aaron. This was appointed unto him by an everlasting covenant and to his seed so long, so long as the heavens should remain. Y'all see that? So now give me, here's the next one. Give me, this is one about David. Give me 1 Samuel 16 and 13. I'm still dealing with uh, the blessings of the oil. First, First Samuel, Samuel 16, verse 13. Verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Y'all see how that oil is? This is some, now this ain't the same oil that Aaron had, but I wanted to show you the usage of oil. So when we go back to Psalms 23 and verse 5 again. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's talking about the Bible. The Bible has been prepared in the presence of our enemies, and we are fulfilling what is written in the presence of our enemies. Go ahead. Thou anointest my head with oil. We are anointed with oil, okay, which means the blessings of God, the spirit of God. Go ahead. My cup runneth over. Meaning the blessing is going to be so great, it's going to be above what we can even uh, imagine. Read. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's going into the kingdom. Read verse 6 again. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Y'all see that? That's the proof. That's the kingdom. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Give me Daniel 2.44, please. Start at 43. I like 43. Daniel chapter 2, verse 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay. So this last kingdom, because that's what it's talking about. Let me reference it in case some of you are new. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream of a mighty statue, great and tall. The head was made of gold, which symbolized Babylon. The uh, arms were made of silver, which represented Persia in media. The torso uh, was made of bronze, which represented Greece. The thighs were made of iron, which represented Rome. And the feet and the toes were made of iron and clay, which represents the United States of America and the European Union. 
So now we're reading about this last empire, America and the European Union, the feet which are like iron and clay. Go ahead. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's the proof it's America and Europe because America first and foremost is known as the what? The great what? Melting power. Wherein you got all nations here, all people here. Go ahead. But they shall not cleave one to another. You want to know why there's always racial problems in the country? The prophecy says we shall not cleave one to another. No matter how much you vote, no matter how much you march, we shall overcome. Getting hit upside the head with watermelon, kumbaya and in church. The Bible said what? They shall not cleave one to another. They shall not cleave one to another. Read. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. Iron don't mix with clay. Black don't mix with white. You better get that through your head. We're two different nations. Like it says in Genesis 25. Go ahead. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. That's what you're seeing now. Because Babylon, the kingdom of Babylon is still in existence, Iraq. Persia media is still in, uh, I mean, what is it? Iran. Always get that mixed up. Uh, Persia media is still here. All right. Iran. Am I getting it mixed up? <laughs> uh, Greece is still around. Hell, speaking of Greece... I got to talk about Greece for a second. Uh, give me, don't let me forget Greece. I got to talk about them. Greece is still in existence. Rome is still in its ex existence. America and the European allies are still in existence. America and the European Union. It says, and in the days of these kings, what? And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. That's why he said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. The enemies are seeing Israel gathering together. Our enemies are seeing Israel waking up every day. Read. Which shall never be destroyed. And what y'all see happening, the Bible says this shall never be destroyed. Never. Never, ever, never, ever, ever. You better understand that was that it was Leon and the kingdom shall not be left to other people so guess what for you 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 uh you miscegenators you uh interracial wannabe mixers can't get a what a white woman having you know what I'm talking about Becky ain't coming Becky ain't coming in the kingdom Understand that. Read that part again. And the kingdom. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. The kingdom shall not be left to other people. Your East Indian loving Chinese lovers, they ain't coming. They ain't going. The kingdom ain't being left to them. But China's the new world, next world power. I know they ain't. The Israelites saw how you like me now. That's what the Bible says. So the hell with China. Whatever little friend y'all got out in the world you're trying to make a way. You know what some brothers do. They'll find the, that most red Edomite and then come up to us. Uh, she's Gad. No, that's the devil. That's not Gad. Hey, Elder, what about love? Yeah, what about love? Here they go. Oh, uh, she's uh, Puerto Rican. Well, she, let's speak some Spanish. Huh? You gotta watch these brothers. Where the camera on, online? You little weird brothers, you know who you are trying to sneak. Edomites in the congregation. You might, and I, I might be fooled once or twice, but the Lord going to get you, brothers. You're going you gonna to see what the Lord going to do. That Edomite going to bite you. Exactly. It's in their nature. Hey, remember the Edomite, the brother said, uh, my wife is Puerto Rican. And everybody said, she seem Italian. She don't seem like a Puerto Rican. Mm. Then he wake up on the Sabbath smelling eggs and, and, and pork sausage. He said, what are you doing? She said, I don't believe in that crap. That's your thing. You go do what you going to do. Damn. See, that was that snake that? that snake that came out. <laughs> See, didn't you know? Shoot. Officer Liam, did you finish that? No, person? sir. Okay. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. We're going to consume, destroy all these other kingdoms. Ain't going to be no unity. It ain't going to be no equality. You know what break mean? We're going to break them. They, hell, they broke us, we're going to break them. 
That's true justice. That's right. Okay. And, so, yeah. and it shall stand forever. This kingdom, our kingdom, God's kingdom shall stand forever. I love that thing right there. So now. Wait a minute, Bishop. Go ahead. That verse is called racial anxiety. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This is what the title or the, uh, the series of Planet of the Apes. This that verse right there. Read that verse again. And, it, and, the day, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall not be left to other people. Meaning that they know that the Israelites are going to rule the next kingdom. That's the anxiety that they're worried about. That's, that's, the, that's what they fear. Go ahead. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. You see that? That's the racial anxiety. They are worried about this here because they know this is coming. I will stop there. So we got to talk about that part about they shall not cleave. What did it say? In Daniel 2, what did it say? Y'all forgot? And and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. No. Verse 43. But they shall not cleave one to another. That's what I want right there. Now, for you miscegenators, look it up. Get a clue. Miscegenators, you racial mixers, you interracial one of The Negro loves Miss Ann, loves Becky. So this brother, now I'm not mocking the brother. I'm not mocking him. Lord rest his soul. But he loved Esau. And when you go to his Facebook page, it's all Edomites to his friends. He got one small photo with other black people. Everybody else is the white man and white woman. I mean, the whole Facebook page. That's him on the side right there. His name is Bakari Henderson. And y'all see on the sides, Bukhari Henderson's friends didn't help him. That's the one, the second one. Then a, one under it, he's with the one, Miss Ann, Becky. Now, can we play the video? It's very short, but I want y'all to see the fulfillment of they shall not cleave one to another. He goes to Greece. He said, I don't want to go. Now, he didn't say that. This is me. This is me. Don't play it yet. This is me. And I mean, I don't want to lie. You know how people do. I ain't going to no black nation. I don't want to go to no nation where there's colored folks. I want to go where the white man liveth and dwelleth. Because he's civilized. So our dear brother decided he's going to go to where it all began. Greece, the mother of civilization. He goes there and let's, let's roll the tape. He's in a bar and someone, he takes a selfie. Disturbing photo. surveillance video reveals how the attack that killed an American in Greece began and how it ended. Local media say the footage shows Bakari Henderson running from a group of men. They then throw him down, kick and punch him numerous times. It happened outside a bar on the island of Zakynthos. Tony DeCopel is here with new details on how the violence quickly escalated. Tony, really hard to watch this footage. Indeed. Good morning. Uh, the video is now court evidence, and police confirm it's genuine. It shows that fewer than 20 seconds passed between the time the group began pummeling Bakari Henderson and the time they stepped away from his lifeless body. And we're also learning more about what led to this brutal attack from video inside the bar. Security footage shows a man and a woman taking a selfie next to a person Greek media say is Bakari Henderson. Moments later, a man next to Henderson grabs a bottle of beer and makes a smashing motion, setting off a confrontation that escalates when the man hits Henderson on the head. A few seconds later, Henderson hits back. The men then run out of view. Surveillance video from a nearby bar shows Henderson trying to run away before someone throws him against a car. Several others begin to kick and punch him as he collapses in the street. Bystanders try to break up the attack, and someone appears to give Henderson CPR. Greek authorities say Henderson died from severe head injuries. Nine men face voluntary manslaughter charges, including seven Serbians and two workers from the bar. One of those workers, a bouncer, told a local paper he tried to break up the fight, but that Henderson took an ashtray and threw it at me. He admits he responded by punching him in the face and two or three times in the body.
I'd never seen him rattled a day in my life. Henderson's friend Daniel Brown spoke with CBS News in Greece this week. He was with Henderson on the island of Zakynthos. But he says he wasn't at the bar in the party district of Laganas when the fight broke out. He told us Henderson, a recent college graduate who was working to start his own clothing line, was a selfless person who always kept his cool. He was never really worried about material objects or social status or anything like that, and he was non-judging of everyone he met. And because of that, he easily had the most diverse and large group of friends anyone could ask for. Four suspects appeared in court today for initial testimony. Back in Texas, meanwhile, a spokeswoman for Henderson's family tells us they're planning memorial services for Friday and Saturday. She says they're hoping to have his body back home by then. Oh, geez, and that's likely, you think? It seems like it, yeah. Thank you, Chief. Well, all righty then. Can we read the prophecy once again? Daniel 2, 43. So, like I said, I'm not making fun of the brother, but I know some of you, I know some of you brothers right now, you thinking about that white woman. You just love Miss Angela. You don't love, you don't believe the Bible. You know who you are. I bet if you visit some of their homes, there'll be a photo. You know I got that photo you forgot was still there with the white woman. And they giggling over here, but guess what, sister? You know, some of you sisters love that white man. I remember coming out trying to get a girlfriend. She said, no, I don't want you too black. I need, a, I need a white man with nice hair. Because my baby got to have nice, straight hair. Not that stuff you got. I used to hear that. I said, what the hell is this? She's I should of, punch you in the face. She's, uh, but I didn't do that. Didn't she's that. dreaming of The Bachelor. When exactly. they watch that program on television, they all were all... The white man standing there and a whole bunch of black women want to be his, his, on his arm. Want to be his bedwinch. Want to be, that's what it really is. That's what it okay, is. It really bedwinch. is the bedwinch. So can we read that again, Officer Liam? So now listen, you ain't going to believe me. Maybe I'm just a crazy old racist. <laughs> Let's see what God says. Daniel chapter 2 verse 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another. They shall not cleave one to another. So he went to Greece. Right. Where it all began. See, Bishop, you know you got to turn it around a little bit. Because sometimes people are still trying to justify that it did not happen for the reason that we know. And for the reason why we know that it happened, they don't want to accept that. Mm -hmm. If he was an Edomite, do you think we would have seen what we just saw there? So why did he get it? Because he was black, period. Let's just get the understanding. Esau be in that club doing all kind of craziness. You don't see none of that going on with them. Exactly. So this black behind shouldn't have been over there. That's the point. That's right. Hey, hey, you're hey. going to be comfortable with all those Edomites around you drinking beer. Are you crazy? You, hey. There might be a noose hanging up in the back. You're right about that. I'd be hair on my back of my neck and start standing up. Hey, remember our good friend OJ? People. OJ ain't learned his lesson. Look what happened to OJ. You would have thought after the first white woman, he'd have left him alone. Mm -mm. He went and found one that looked just like that first one. I said, what is wrong with the brother? Yeah. And look what happened. It bit him. It bit. Give me that in uh, Joshua 23. They put him in a jail cell with his jersey number. <laughs> yes. Y'all think laughing, I'm kidding? But it's true. <laughs> and locked it and, and convicted him. What exactly? What was it? Exactly seven years after he was acquitted. Exactly. They got him. They set him up lovely. And guess they, what? We they have let no know. power to help. Right. None. But watch this. Joshua 20. Is it 23 and uh, 15, I think, or 12? Thank you. Listen good. Joshua chapter 23, verse 12. Else, if you do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them. So somebody, right, he didn't marry none of them, but it also mentioned the word cleave, like we read in Daniel uh, 2.43, about trying to get together with them. Go ahead. And go in unto them, uh -huh. and they to you. All right, now, all the brother did was take a selfie with a white woman. Yep. And the white man looked and said, what the hell is this? Bust the bottle and popped him upside the head. They thought about what that selfie would do. That might, prov that might produce more of your kind. That might filter into the minds of our young girls that think this is chic and that you did it in our bar. Nigga, you got to die. That's the thought that went through their mind. See, they don't like that reality, bitch, like but that's reality. what it is. Y'all got to think about why they did that. They say he's taking a selfie 
You know how pictures can just go everywhere. Mm-hmm. They said, we don't need that. And he's the only he's black the only dude one in, in the bar. You know, you ever see, you know what? There have been times when I've been at work and I'm the only black man in the room. And I feel very uncomfortable because I have to go back because I'm like, something might happen here. Y'all know some of y'all used to like that thing. I'm, you thought you were special. I'm special because I'm the only darkie around. Yeah, you special, all right. There'll be a noose hanging up in the back for you, too. Give me that. Read that. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares. See that? They shall be snares. And traps. And traps. Unto you. Unto you. Right? And scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes. Yeah, and, and it, that became literal yeah. with that brother. He got the beats down. Was that it? Until you perish from all Until you good. die. He said, until you die. That's what happened to the brother. So you keep treating the Bible like a book of mythology. It looked like it was about 30 people beating the hell out of him. I know Do you it felt think, like it. Huh? huh? It must have it felt, felt like, like it. it. But think about this. Do you think all of them knew what happened? No. But when they saw him running, they say he's a different person from us. And if I see three of my people chasing him, he must have did something. You heard what the bartender said? The, what the bouncer said? I tried to help him, but he threw an ashtray at me. Why did he throw an ashtray at you? Were you really trying to help him? Right. After he threw the ashtray, he said, so once he threw it, I punched him in the face several times. Right. That's the help. He threw an ashtray. Oh, y'all, he, Lord have mercy. y'all believe that if y'all want to. Stay the hell away from him. You better stay away. Y'all keep playing with these Edomites. They are the... De- what you want to say, Malachi? Yeah, them, them Edomites in these other countries, man. They, they, are, they are different breeds, same way. You understand? Don't think you brothers that go on vacation to some of these countries, you all might go to like them Russians, them Albanians, you know, listen. These, Serbians. The Serbians, yo, they crazy, man. They, they different from the breed of Edomite over here. You understand? Them dudes, is, they, will, they will murder you on the quickness. You know, especially if you go in one of these places, you know, brothers go over there on vacation. I want to deal with the woman and them over there like what this brother do mm. brothers go to other countries and they go and they sleep with these white females in these other countries you understand so sometimes when them when them guys and them see that they don't like that you understand so they they either they give you beat downs man what happened to the woman yeah they, well it was a woman i don't know if it's the they said a bystander tried to help him all his friends was going no, why didn't they beat did they beat her up no i think they stayed in the bar they didn't <laughs> help him well, because of there's other videos with his friends that were there. And there's videos asking, why didn't you help him? They, it just happened so fast. Nah. You let me get beat, we ain't friends no more. Yeah, some of y'all know y'all had boys like that. Let you get beat down. And if you're still friends with him, y'all stupid. <laughs> Hello, this is, I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.